Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie the Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 63, and for this last, presumably last match, we're gonna have a match between between Hokomoko and Orphelius on Isle of Grief. So this map, I'm well, I'll give it a chance, see what happens. I mean, I'm I mentioned before I'm not sure how this will go, because Isle of Grief is a map which tends to get a lot of gunship play, usually get because of the way it's set up, you get gunships and you get a lot of decent amount of amphib, usually gunship cloaky, that tends to be commonly used. We did see last time a fair amount of light vehicles, which was a different approach, for sure. So let's just begin this match then. And indeed, Orphelia is going for the gunships off the bat, and... Surrendering off the bat. What the heck? Hokomoko probably going for light vehicles. There we go. Light vehicles down at the low ground, which is where they usually start out because that's where you would. And we are... Oh. Well, we're going to be going for a relatively typical setup. Opening dart, opening banshee, not blastwing, and no gnats this time. Pure banshee. I mean, I actually tried Banshee Nat the other yesterday against Knife Ruined, and it worked. And then I didn't expand as much as I should have, and it ended up failing. But it worked for a while, so Banshee Nat opening, definitely worth doing. It's got a lot going for it. But in this case, Orphelia is going for pure Banshee, while on the other hand, Hokomoko going more economical. I mean, they have the darts, they're obviously going to get some, sla some Scorchers, not Slashers, but for the Scorchers, and... Once again, go for the Mason on the high ground. We saw a very similar play last time on this map, actually. Come to think of it, I think it might... It wasn't this game, but I think it might have also been Orphelius and Okamoko on Isle of Grief. And... Let's see. No, it was Flipstep and Hokomoko on Isle of Grief. Flipstep went for gunships, and Hokomoko went for light vehicles. So Hokomoko with the light vehicles, which, as I mentioned before, for Hokomoko is a bit of a change. They're clearly expanding their comfort zone, because they are very much an Amphib player, or were very much an Amphib player, but they've clearly become much more comfortable with playing non-amphib map or non-amphib playstyles. They're also having issues with priority as far as their main mason goes, but that'll be sorted out soon enough. Anyhow, actually, that's kind of a bit of a big deal though, because that mason's not being able to build much metal, or not that quickly at least, because of the high priority commander. This does leave Orphelia's a bit of an opening to get the economic advantage going on pretty early. I mean, not enough wind really to make this work. Like, everything here is at minimum. So Orphelia's running into a bit of a problem production-wise as far as getting wind energy going. But at the same time, for Banshee so far, attacking right now would actually be very devastating. I'd probably win the game if Orphelia's were to go for it. And indeed, they are going for it. This... Oh, get that Mason. If they get that Mason, Orphelia's is going to be in a wonderful position... Hokumoku with a slight economic advantage, but it won't matter if they lose their Mason. And indeed, there's not much that will be done against it. The Scorcher doing what it can, but really it's not going to be able to do much. The Mason is going to go down. All the Metal Extractors are going to go down. And then afterwards, there should be Crashers right away. No, Levelers! Also a good choice. Levelers and Hacksaw. So the Banshees... Ah, oh, this is super close timing. There's eight seconds left. No, they're not going to go for it. Instead, assuming Orphelius... I feel this assuming that Hokomoko went over to the western side of the map, which they did not. So Hokomoko in a position to rebuild. Not in a great position. They did lose a bit of their economy. I mean, they're losing their economic advantage, that's for sure. But they are at least not getting attacked in the main base. The time for a massive surprise attack at Banshees is over. It did damage. did meaningful damage. It didn't win the game outright. But it did force Hokomoko to build a lot of levelers. So a switch to Rapiers right now for Orphelius would actually do a lot of good. I mean, the Hacksaw wouldn't be able to deal with it super effectively. The Levelers would be useless against it, or near useless. Not totally useless. The Fast Projectile helps a lot, but they would have a bit of a harder time than against Banshees. And the... And overall, Rapiers at this stage probably would be quite effective at just dealing the damage needed. I mean, Rapiers are good. They're just kind of expensive. But no, instead, Orphelia switching over to purely light vehicles. And that light vehicle factory going to be building a lot of Scorchers, which is unfortunate because there are... How many levelers up right now? There are two levelers. Okay, that's fine. It's not so bad. A couple levelers won't be a big problem. And Hokomoko not able to scout out Orphelius. Orphelius possibly hinting that they do have expansions over to the eastern side of the map, which they don't. In fact, they don't even have any wasps, which would be very convenient for getting those expansions, but not going for that at all. 
and a couple Scorchers being built up, these will go down to a leveler. The first leveler they find, they're dead. At the same time, the Banshee's going around the side, going to have a bit of a rude awakening once they find the Hacksaw and the Crashers and everything else around here that's been set up pretty much specifically to stop them. Which they won't actually find out because now they're just going to go for the levelers. And wisely avoiding that leveler because it's not going to go down quickly enough. Good thing though, Orpheus knows that's the case. Switching over to Ravagers looks like just about because they saw the leveler. They just switched everything to Ravager. Smart move. Ravagers do a much better job against levelers than Scorchers do. I mean, they basically counter levelers. Levelers do not have the firepower to get through the Ravager HP, so the Ravager is no problem dealing with them. And four Scorchers just for good measure. I mean, if they ever find the commander out in the open, well, the commander's dead. Although it is a recon commander, so it might be able to jump away from that. And... Ooh, not a whole lot to get rid of the Scorcher. Wow, nothing to get rid of the Scorcher. No static defenses or anything. That caretaker's dead. The factory's going... Go down... Well, if it's... It won't go down, but it's still pretty heavily threatened. At least it forces Orphelius' hand back, and more importantly, gets rid of the caretaker, which, as I mentioned last time, that halves the production capacity of this light vehicle factory. Huge deal. That needs to be rebuilt as soon as possible, and indeed it is. Orphelius getting that set up. Still, that is not what Orphelius needs right now. They need to have just... Actually, no, no, Orphelius can handle it. They, they're fine. They have an economic advantage. They have enough of a production advantage, a good military advantage. As long as these Banshees don't commit suicide, and Orphelius is using them intelligently. They're moving them around the map where there's possibilities of naked expansions, or at least poorly defended expansions. Not going for the main, or where... Not going for where Hokomoko started out going for everything else, like just making sure that Hokomoko is not expanding, and really Hokomoko isn't. Hokomoko has barely built any more metal extractors since that one harassment. Like, they're now rebuilding them six minutes into the game. Hokomoko has been running 13 metal per second, Orphilius has been running like 20 to 30 metal per second depending on reclaim. So Orphilius in a really good spot right now thanks to that harassment, and really it was just one mason that died. But Hokomoko got so concerned about air and anti-air that it really skewed everything they built. So now Orphelius is basically just waiting until a good opportunity to run through and run rush out over Hokomoko. Granted, at this point, Hokomoko is now rebuilding their economy and getting more or less on par with Orphelius, but Orphelius... I mean... Actually, they're getting a little bit cocky. Gotta be honest. They're starting to get overconfident. Running good defense with the Banshees, though. Like, they're definitely doing with these Banshees what I was kind of hoping 400 would do last game, which is once they realize, oh, there's anti-air... Just run them as a bit of a defense force, midfield force. Don't really worry too much about using them as assault units. Just try to make sure to use them to keep your opponent from doing anything you don't want them to do. Just keep them honest. And also keep your stuff safe. And that's what Ophelius is doing. I really like to see that. That's that's how you use Banshees in the mid-game. I mean, when you have a lot of Banshees. Obviously, if they die, don't... Re don't bother rebuilding them. But if they haven't died, then they're great just for this defensive force. And perhaps just doing a bit of damage. Not really going to worry too much about it. Orphelius work, just making sure they know what's going on. Dealing a bit of damage, getting out of the way. Orphelius at this point, very keen on keeping their units alive. Which, yeah, I'd say it's a good idea. I mean, their production is okay, but they do have a caretaker that's not doing anything because Orphelius is not building anything. Why, Orphelius, are you not building anything from your light vehicle factory? You have stuff you could be building. But, independent of that, Orphelius, it's more so that, you know, keeping units alive is units that aren't dead. And then they're useful. I mean, these Banshees, no more Banshees are going to be built. But they're still useful as harassment forces. They're still useful to make sure that Hokomoko is not expanding faster than Orphelius would like. And as long as they stay alive, they're still threatening Hokomoko and forcing Hokomoko every single time they do anything to think, Oh, shoot, do I have a good anti-air force to deal with this? And... Crasher coming in. Oh, no, the Banshees, they, they need to escape. One Banshee goes down. I was about to say, they might go for the Crasher and take it out, but no, that's really too risky. At the same time, though, there aren't a whole lot of Crashers on the field. There's only, like, two. Three. There's only three on the field. So the Banshee's still working nicely as the midfield defense, getting rid of a couple of Ravagers for free. Nearly free, not... No, not quite free anymore. Those Banshees have got to escape. Still got rid of a Ravager for free. Good move there. So, like I said, keeping Hokomoko from getting too far out. Norphelius just dominating. Oh, man, if it weren't for the fact that they aren't building anything. I mean, they have some Wolverines, but they're hardly building anything. They need to be building a lot more stuff. I don't know why they're not on a repeat queue. At this point, they could actually build a few more gunships just to have a few more things to keep things honest. Like, you know, rapier or two. 
wouldn't be a bad idea. It would get away from the crashers. But it would still... It would still be a threat. Because Rapier's a much better at the hit-and-run game. And that battle is going very strongly for Orphelius. And the Wolverine's not really the important thing there. Really, it was the Scorchers from Orphelius just ripping apart what Hokomoko had. And the fact that Hokomoko's army is not really all that well composed. I mean, they have a few crashes here and there. They've got they've got to really be running defense on every possible option that can come out there. I mean, they have the levelers to take care of the Scorchers, but they, of course they have to spend money on the crashes to get rid of the Banshees, and they have to have their own Raptors to make sure that the Scorchers have to spend a little more time, and the Raptors... The, Sorry, the, the Scorchers and the Banshees have to spend more time dealing with the Ravagers. And Orphelius with the Wolverines on top of that, softening everything up in the process. Making it even harder, and at this point, Orphelius all on the front line here. Which does leave Hokomoko free to build up the south, the northwest, but at the same time, that's not really Hokomoko's main concern. Hokomoko's chief concern is making sure that Orphelius can't just push in, because if any of these crashes die, if all the crashes die especially, that's it. The Stardust will help, and the Razor will help, but if those Crashers die, then the army can't really move forward without the Banshees killing them all. And if everything on the ground dies, then the ground force moves in, wipes out everything that could stop the Banshees, and then the Banshees move in and kill everything. Or help kill everything. Really, they're a support force, but still. They're a deadly support force. They're a dangerous, threatening support force. Should point out, though, that Hokomoko does have an economic parity, roughly, with Orphelius. But Orphelius in such a dominating position right now... I mean, if this is lost, this is pretty much the game right here. If Hokomoko loses this expansion over here, they've probably... They've, they've invested so much of their army into that expansion. They're getting the Jump Out Factory, which isn't a bad idea. Get some Fireworkers probably to burn away all these claws. But if Hokomoko loses this expansion, they've invested way too much into that expansion to easily recover to the rest of the game. They're trying to get the sort Northwest, trying to get a bigger basket to work with, but their, their eggs are all here. However, nice flank coming in from the south. The Crash are trying to help out, but not enough, unfortunately, for them. The Scorchers completely go down. Still those half-dozen Banshees. From the beginning of the game, Orphelius has not built any more Banshees. Testament to how important it is, if possible, to keep units alive. Those Banshees have been there since minute one. They've been there for the last ten minutes of the game. They've been there the entire game. And they have been keeping Hokomoko on their toes. However, at this point, it's starting to turn around a little bit, or at least... It's harder for Orphelius to keep an advantage. The map's kind of split evenly, and there's not a whole lot of reclaim to work with. There's some, and it will be taken. But once the caretaker's done repairing, yeah, then we get some reclaim. Orphelius will be able to actually get some economic advantage going on. A little bit, not much. Just a little bit. And these Raptors coming in in a bit of a disadvantaged position. I mean, they'll survive, but unfortunately coming in one at a time, a couple of them just go down for free, and Hokomoko... Able to actually deal, deal a fair amount of damage, forcing Orphelius to not really engage too strongly as much as they would have liked to. Same time, though, there's the Firewalker getting rid of the claws, but the Scorcher doesn't care. Figures, well, okay, that's what you're going for, huh? Your main base? You don't have any levelers or anything? Got it. I'll just push in. I'll kill everything. Burn it to the ground! Or melt it to the ground, because it's a heat ray. But melt it to the ground! Just make it all melt. And that's game. And at the same time, this expansion going down as well. So Hokomoko taking way too much damage in what they invested in primarily. And that wins the game for Ophelius. But yeah, that... Keep your units alive, people. All six... Only one of those Banshees died. The entire game. And that was due to a slight misplay over here with the Crasher. And every one of them forced Hokomoko to build more anti-air than they would have liked to, allowing Orphelius to focus entirely on anti-ground, and that allowed Orphelius to just run roughshod over everything Hokomoko had done. And the claws were the Wolverines were a good idea too, because that I mean obviously it just softened up forces and also pushed Hokomoko to getting jump bot for firewalkers, which are expensive and only really able to deal with the claws. Granted, Orphelius had to push in with the Scorchers. If that hadn't happened, the Firewalkers would have started to run roughshod over Ho Orphelius' defenses, because that's what they do. But still, with the Scorchers in place, and Orphelius able to keep a good ground force going because they just they had everything they needed, they didn't have to worry about anti-air, they could invest more money in there. That worked out beautifully. And not to mention the early, super early and consistent economic advantage that came from the harassment. I mean, there was a bit of a period near the end where Hokomoko was getting an advantage, but Orphelius had the advantage from the start of the game, and pretty much consistently throughout. 
So yeah, the one thing for Hokomoko, I'm a bit surprised they didn't expand further. Like, really, I think that's what did it, in. There was a bit of a chance, especially if they had built a couple of masons pushed out here, but I think they were so worried, and rightly so, about Banshees. They didn't really want to do that until they had a strong anti-air force. And I guess they figured Orphelius was probably going to suicide their Banshees to deal the damage they needed. Which Orphelius never did. Orphelius was actually really smart about keeping their Banshees alive. Which also meant that Hokomoko could probably play chicken and win when it comes to having a few anti-air defenses against a few Banshees. Like, one Crasher was enough to discourage the Banshees from attacking this expansion. But that really is a matter of reading your opponent, knowing whether or not they're going to be going for the super risky plays where they suicide units in order to get a small advantage, or if they're going to play smart, or at least play conservatively, and keep their units alive. And that's a really difficult thing to know. If you know how your opponent's going to act that way, you can obviously use that to inform your own strategy. Hokomoko, I think they were thinking Orphilius was going to suicide their Banshees in, which a lot of players will do. That's not a bad thing to think. It's certainly not wrong. A lot of players will do that. And I think it's what Hokomoko had in mind, was thinking Orphilius would do. Unfortunately for them, they weren't right about it, but still, it makes sense. Anyhow, that is going to be it for me tonight, so I hope you enjoyed that. Especially that second game, but even the last game also. Really... Really useful demonstrations about how saving units wins you games. Or at least makes it a lot easier to win games. Like this one, at least. But yeah, thanks for watching, everyone, and have a good night.